Maybe the sound is back. Pretzel Rock seems like it thinks it's playing stuff. Are we fully back? I should probably check. Just got to the, uh, got to the power cable a second too late. Should be fixed now. Yeah, it was, uh, it didn't like me stretching the cable over here. I don't know if it pulled the camera out a little bit, but you can see the miter saws over here. Um, sure with the light there, if you'll be able to see much of what I'm doing, but all right. Back to mute, do some cuts, and then uh, we'll be back. All right, hang on.
All right. So we have we have the shape um, of the outside of it, basically the way we want. Um, I might actually trim this side so that it's because this is just a little bit narrower on one side than the other, and then um, this piece will go like this. We'll have side pieces that go along the length of it um, like this. So we just basically need to have um, this trimmed down a little bit, which I'll probably do here in a second because I feel like there's just a slight difference in the width here, um, which actually isn't like terrible, but, um, but I'd like to have them be perfectly symmetrical if possible. And then um, I'll have to cut these two angles that match the angle of the face and um, then this pieces will be in here at an angle, so we have the top. Uh, and then just need to basically cut this thing in half, which I'm going to do with the... Um... <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, which I will do with the table saw um, by pulling the blade all the way up, and I'll just run it through once like this, run it through once like, like this and um, it'll cut this thing into two pieces. And then I'll need to do some planing or maybe some fancy sanding um, to get it down to the thickness that I want and clean, um, but it'll be close. And I think that's all we'll do for tonight. Um, and then um, I'll have to cut these pieces, which is relatively simple. I'll just pop them on the miter saw, make the angle cuts that I need. Um, I just wanna think a little bit about how I want to cut them um, so that they're uh, the right angles um, to fit around this thing, and then, um, yeah, and then we'll have a top and a bottom piece, we'll have the side pieces, I just need to glue stuff together. So the next time you see it, it'll basically look probably like one of these, without the tines mounted on it, and then, um, maybe tomorrow night, or uh, possibly Friday night, we'll see. Um, I should have the tines, or I'll have the rest of it together except for the tines, and that will be the only part that's left um, to do. And then you need to tune these, so that's actually a little tedious bit of work, but um, the finishing for the wood needs to be done before you mount the tines on it anyway. So um, let's just trim this down a tiny little bit so that it's basically right, right in the middle, so that these are right in the middle. Um, and it's basically what I was doing earlier, just pulling the uh, a miter saw down with just a slight edge to it each time to trim it down a little farther. So I'm going to do that for this side to tighten this down just a little bit so it's equal distance and then that'll be it. Uh, we'll, we'll cut it in half and, and it'll be ready to go. Pretty simple. Thanks for hanging out, Chook. All right, you're always uh, always having a blast to check out people's power tools. Um, it's sitting on one of my favorite power tools, which is actually the planer. Um, the planer actually lets me do a lot 
of really fine woodwork. So, um, Pink, thanks for hanging out with us. Twitch Mobile is bad. Uh, you've managed to sort a solution that's bearable. You have a chat in a different system so you can actually chat. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to hang out. It's fine. Um, we're just working on this, uh, kalimba and all the cuts are done except for, I'm going to, I'm going to actually split this thing in half because it's twice as thick as it needs to be. So, uh, a really simple, uh, single cut with a power saw, uh, with a table saw. And then, um, I might put a hole in it tonight too. So there's a, um, a, I have a hole saw that'll cut the, um, the circle for the sounding hole. So, and then basically it's a bit of, uh, gluing stuff together. A couple of cuts on these little pieces that I made and then, uh, gluing the pieces together. So next time it'll basically be the whole kalimba frame mostly together. Um, but I'll probably put some pictures of the construction in the discord. So if you're interested in seeing that juke, um, I'll just drop it either in the photo section or, or, uh, or into the main, you know, general chat area. All right, going back to mute for a bit while I do the uh, the table saw. Aha, yeah. Um, landline connections are helpful. Um, yeah, all right, so back to the table saw. And uh, again, I'll try to work on keep, keeping all of my fingers.
Yeah, I guess it probably would be a little unnerving to see the table saw <laughs> without hearing it. It is kind of weird. Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, well, trust me, you would prefer it to the sound it actually makes, which is super loud. And uh, I have a shop vac hooked up to it that's taking most of the sawdust um, as it's cutting it. So I'm sure you saw me unplugging it there a second ago. But the, um, the shop vac is old and it also is as loud as the table saw is. So together they make quite a, quite a lot of noise. Um, but you can see, um, now I have two perfect uh, copies of the, um, uh, the same angles. Everything is basically identical top to bottom and that's the way I want it. Um, so that the um, ultimate product when I'm done will have, um, these lines will wrap all the way around um, on the top and also on the bottom. So, um, like I said, this is the first time I've tried to do it this way, where I have the, um, the box completely wrap around. Um, and I kind of like it. Um, it's very efficient. My approach was very efficient. Um, but it's basically there. The only thing I have left to do is cut the hole in the center, um, the sounding hole. So um, you can see I've already put a little dot where, uh, where it goes and the saw piece that goes with it. And um, these are basically the same thickness. Um, and I'm going to either run them through the planer or I may just try to sand them because they're not that far from, uh, from perfect and um, uh, sand them down. So, but they're the same thickness. Um, if you're going to, um, the recommendation is if you're gonna make one a little bit thinner, it's probably a better idea to have it be the sounding board, the top board rather the, the or sorry, yeah, the top board should be a little bit thinner if you're gonna do it that way. Um, but I don't actually, um, uh, they're both the same thickness, so I don't really need to do that. So, <laughs> the stuff that's allowed that's in another room. Well, I kind of need to be in the room where these things are happening. I guess I could put the microphone in another room, but um, it might be awkward to have you switch to a microphone that's like, you know, in the hallway so that you can hear it without having to get a crazy uh, loud sound. Ah, cool. Someday you'd like to make a marimba and a vibraphone. Those would be really cool. I'm actually working on um, building, I don't know if you can see this in the background. Um, I was building a, uh, a template. This is just out of cheap wood um, for a, um, uh, a tongue drum. So I was just playing around with it. This hasn't been tuned or anything. But I'd like to build one with like, um, uh, nice wood. So I just wanted to try to get a template together and sort of see how it would look and sound with, um, with cheap wood and, um, and practice tuning it before I play around with the actual expensive wood because the wood I have is, you know, pricey. But, um, you can actually tune these to, uh, to specific, <laughs> to specific notes. And um, my camera just decided it didn't like that. Um, and then uh, I'll probably build a couple of them. Uh, this is just a super ball stuck on a dowel rod, so not very exciting. But um, uh, this part I still need to refine a little bit. I want to make sure I can make perfectly straight lines. And um, I don't have like a big uh, device for it. But I started playing with it. Once I figure out how uh, how good I can tune it, and yeah, prototyping is the way to explore it. So I just do the cheap stuff, and then I can go, okay, I got it the way I want it, and I'll upgrade to the nice wood. Um, something like this size of a um, a tongue drum with really nice wood costs something like five hundred dollars, um, and uh, I, it, it's not five hundred dollars a wood for sure, so um, pricey, 
but it's in my list of things to to um, to try to make. And then they also have one that are just like four little tongues. Like you could make a small version of this. You don't have to have um, this has twelve six on each side, and um, so I, I'm still working on like how I might want that to go but I'm just sort of playing around with it for now. Um, the way that you tune it is actually kind of interesting. You, um, you flip it around to the inside, and if you want the note to be higher, you, uh, you grind off some of the wood here with a Forstner bit, and if you want it to be lower, you grind some off of the bass with a Forstner bit, and you can just play with it and then take it and bang on it until it gets tuned correctly. Um, the other thing I want to do with this is probably put some blocks of wood in here so that it's um, more rigid. That's another thing I saw some people talking about. Like, this is good, but you know, if you could put some blocks in here that are um, in, in the ends that are under the tongues. So, first thing to figure out how to get the top part. Um, yeah, that's cool. Um, and it'll sound a lot better once the um, the board on the bottom actually adds a lot to the volume because it, it needs to resonate inside the, um, the chamber. So um, you could actually play it with your hands. You don't need to use the little um, rubber ball thing. But it's on my, it's on my like, list of things to work on. And I just love the idea of building musical instruments um, of all types. So if you weren't here earlier, I had this little wood shakers that I've been making. I made one for Asymmetric. Uh, Asymmetrical Soul was here a little bit earlier. I don't know if he's still around. And then um, I have one of these that's on its way to uh, to Whistler, uh, British Columbia. Um, hopefully it'll get there before uh, Hannah's anniversary happens, her stream anniversary. Um, but also her birthday, I think, is in that range, so it'll make a nice present when it gets there. Um, and then I don't know what's going to happen with this other one. Um, this one, uh, I talked to maybe Piper Lee and see if she was interested in it. She sounded somewhat interested in it, but um, we haven't come to any kind of like conclusion about what she, whether she wants it or not. So it's still up in the air. Um, all right, so the last thing I need to do is just basically cut a hole, uh, the sounding board hole. And um, I don't want to drill into my actual table. <laughs> um, so I'm going to try to avoid that. The tool set that I need is actually hiding under the microphone as well here. So um, I have a box of, uh, this is a hole saw uh, box. And so it just has a range of different sized hole um, cutting tools. And I use that mostly for bird houses because um, I build my own bird houses and bird feeders and stuff. Um, but this is, uh, this one doesn't fit in the box. This is like a three and a half inch or something hole that I was using. I built my sister's um, wine racks and I needed something that basically would cut uh, a hole that was big enough that a wine bottle could fit in it. So it was actually, they're actually really nice little wine racks that I made out of oak. Um, one, I think that was maybe like three or four Christmases ago. It was actually kind of a while ago, um, but I really liked it. And uh, I, I've learned a lot since I started doing that. So I feel like I could do a better job with it today um, if I was given the exact same uh, stuff. I can't remember which hole I picked. This is the hole that we wanted to cut. It's roughly the same size as the one that I had. So that's what little Chuka asked me for was one that was basically the same size. Same size. Um, Pink says, I have made prototypes of solar system, of a solar system, which currently powers the lights in your kitchen. I mean like a, like a solar panel, solar tracker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And a simple wind turbine. Yeah. Those are really cool. Um, that's actually really, really nice. Um, I don't know if I could ever go completely off the grid. I feel like it would probably be a challenge to stream from off the grid, but um, I'd really like to get some sort of solar or wind options. Um, and 
I saw some, you know, like some of those people have like systems where they bike and it powers things in their house. I'd really like to do that because I'd like to get some exercise at the same time as I power my home. <laughs> but that is really cool. Um, I don't have the creative genius to do any kind of engineering stuff. So um, you used to have a shop like mine and a lot of the same stuff and you sold it all right before you met Hannah. Oh, oh that's cool. I mean, um, this is the... These are two of my favorite devices right here. This is the planer, uh, which cuts boards into like it, you know, dimensions them so that they're uh, flat. And it really has given me the power to make a lot of things. So I really love the planer. Um, I think the blades probably need to be sharpened or cleaned or flipped. And then I have this oscillating sander, which I absolutely love because I hate sanding, but I love sanding with this thing. So um, those are the two. You can see I'm kind of a DeWalt junkie. I have DeWalt. Uh, that's a DeWalt table um, saw. These are DeWalt full saws. I have a bunch of DeWalt, DeWalt stuff over there as well. Um, mainly just to have all the same type of um, materials, but I usually do a little bit of research to see whether they, um, you know, the device that I'm buying is good or not. And um, I have a uh, Porter cable, um, rather than using DeWalt, I have something else for some of the tools. Um, I bought a biscuit uh, joiner and the biscuit joiner I went with um, uh, I think it's a Mankita so like um, I, I pick them a little bit around like what I what I think is the best tool for what I want and that one actually just turned out to be the best tool but if it's something where it's not really like important which one I get I usually go with the wall so because uh, it's nice to have all my stuff match basically That's the one. These have two different types of, uh, um, you can basically switch out all of the whole saw kit for one for another. And um, this thing locks it into place for people who aren't familiar with it. It has a, um, a locking system there. And the reason that I put the wood in place is because when I cut through this, I don't want to blow out the backside. And at the same time, I don't want to drill into my, um, my um, work table, my workbench. So um, I think I'm actually going to put another piece of wood as well in between um, my workbench and the actual like uh, piece I'm cutting. Um, I have a bunch of just scrap wood laying over here, so I'm just trying to reach it without pulling my internet connection apart again. And then I always clamp everything down when I'm going to be making something. Um, just for safety, I have these quick clamps that I really like um, that I use for everything. Um, and also clamp my piece, the piece that I'm cutting down as well. that's just for safety basically and to keep it from drifting when I go to actually do the uh, the whole saw cutting so um, normally I would just cut this with uh, my wireless I have or whatever cableless um, drills but the whole saw actually requires a little bit more power than they usually have so the cord to drill is um, is coming out for this um, you can actually have full internet lights and sound with an external monitor hooked up to a laptop for about eight hours. Oh, that's all right. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, probably I would need a bigger system because I got, you know, the eight-year-old likes to use power constantly. So <laughs> if it was just me, it probably wouldn't be a little easier to manage. <laughs> but... Um, Still pretty cool. I like that you're, you're working to get off of the grid. Um, this year, I earlier this year, as you know, I bought a, a e-bike and, um, uh, and I've been using it as much as I can. So I don't, um, I don't use, I have a very fuel efficient car anyway, but, um, but I just love the idea when I ride my bike that I'm, you know, I'm super clean and uh, I can actually 
get to work at the same speed on my bike as I can um, in my car because my bike actually goes like 30 miles an hour. So, um, and uh, sometimes I actually get some exercise doing that too, but usually I'm just trying to get to work quickly. Sometimes I turn down the, um, the pedal assist and actually <laughs> let it, um, uh, let myself have to work to get to, to some place. Oh, what's going on? Is this not gonna work? That's a bigger drill in. in this one but the battery just doesn't just in case, because I don't know how loud it's going to be for you guys, even for this little drill. It's probably going to be kind of loud. So uh, you'll just have to watch and listen to the music if it's still playing. It doesn't seem like Pretzel Rock has been very consistent tonight. It's sort of popping in and out when it's working. Um, I'm not sure why. OK, uh, mute for a bit, and then we'll have a hole. Made it through, muddled through it a little bit there. Um, so we have a nice hole uh, cut in the middle, front and back, and the edge pieces. So I just need to cut the edge pieces, basically glue everything together and do a little bit of sanding. And that's it. We have a hole and, uh, and then mount on the, uh, the hardware. So relatively simple, um, what remains, but um, yeah, so I'm going to disassemble this a little bit and then we'll probably just find somebody to parade. Um, it's a relatively short stream. It was meant to be a short stream anyway. And I have a, uh, a little eight-year-old helper who loves to just clean up sawdust. She always wants to um, come down here and just clean up the sawdust for me. So um, here's our little uh, piece of wood it cut out. It's actually the hardest part of dealing with the whole saw is the fact that um, after you cut the hole, the piece of wood gets stuck in there pretty much every time. And it has these little holes on the side that are meant to help you like use a screwdriver or something to get it out. Um, and the thicker that piece of wood is, the harder it is to actually get out of that hole. So anyway, um, 
I'm going to just, I was trying to clear up some space so I could showcase the actual pieces. There's our two um, front and back plates, uh, top and bottom pieces that will be the edges, and um, the length edges that will go basically along the length. And we still need to make these cuts, and, and that's it. That'll be the whole thing. Um, I made this one also a little skinnier than past kalimbas, um, and that's because the um, I ordered a case for it, um, like I did for Hannah's, and um, so you have something to keep it in and keep it safe. And um, I wanted to make sure it would fit, so a lot of the um, store-bought types of kalimbas are thinner than the one that I made, and I had a tr hard time basically fitting it into the kalimba case that we bought. So I'm hoping the slightly smaller size dimensions that I used for this one doesn't really matter for the sound very much. Um, and uh, the thin, a little bit thinner um, construction will make it so that it'll actually fit in the case for a typical uh, kalimba that you'd buy in a store, basically. Um, but, you know, this one's custom made, obviously. So, All right, um, I think that's the, the excitement part of what we were aiming for today. And um, the rest of it will be updated basically just through pictures until we get to the part where I'm going to router it and sand it down and um, basically get to the finishing po point. Um, for, um, for Hannah's, so for the one that I have here, um, this actually has clear coat on it, um, on the wood. It seems like maybe my camera, oh, it's still working. It has clear coat on the wood. Um, but the one that I made for Hannah actually has, I use almond oil and, um, you have to treat it occasionally, but basically it's, um, it feels less plasticky. It feels like actual wood and it sounds is the same. So, um, we'll talk about how you want it finished, but, um, my preference is probably that one. Um, I have some more almond oil that I have and I can send you some, um, but uh, when I send the, the package, I'll probably have some of that in there. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I didn't send any along with the, the shaker, but I oiled it pretty good before I sent it, so it should be good. Um, but I like this. This is nice, but I feel like the other one kind of feels more wood. This one feels a little, you know, like the wood is, it's basically, you know, it's got like a clear sheen of really thin plastic basically over the surface so it, it doesn't feel as much like wood um, you know these for example would feel a lot softer and feel a little bit more wooden um, just requires a little bit more maintenance so that this one requires no maintenance um, that's the only difference between them so if you feel like you don't want to do the maintenance then you know um, but you want it to feel a little bit softer then that's probably uh, go with the other one or, or or go with the clear coat either way is fine Okay, um, my intention was to try to raid somebody, and let's see who we have. Uh, obviously, I don't think Hannah's started yet. She doesn't like to start until like midnight. Uh, but Piperly is playing, and I'd really like to raid Piperly. So why don't we do that? And thanks everybody for hanging out um, as I built this. You know, it's just like fun for me to build things, uh, especially for friends. And so um, I'm looking forward to see how this ultimately turns out. And we'll give a run over to, um, to visit my friend Piperly. So, and maybe she'll end up with the shaker um, that I'm constructing. We'll see uh, how she feels about it. So Piperly plays Irish music um, and she does like, uh, um, just covers of Irish songs mostly, but she also does some other kind of rock songs as well. So um, feel free to hang out with her. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, a short stream here in the evening, but yeah, that's exactly, I had to look into exactly what kind of oil to use, um, uh, pink. So you don't think you've seen Piperly yet? Well, she's, I really like Piperly. We hang out in the afternoon. She plays, she practices basically. So it'll be fun to hop over there and raid her. All right, everybody, um, we'll probably catch you. I might stream again tomorrow from the SEM. I don't know, we'll see. And then once I get this thing completed, 
um, we'll do another stream. It'll probably be like a short one like this one, just an hour or something. Okay, let's go. Homely things for that suggestion, and actually, no, please stop. We get actual weekly texts. That is terribly confusing. I'm gonna keep that tab open so that I can remember to study that because that was super fun. Ah, Voltage Shock Diatoms, welcome in, and thank you, little chip. <laughs> um, and Joseph Radio, Voltage Shock. Um, if you want to request a new song, you can do exclamation point FL. And I will happily play something. Um, let's do a loop. Let's have a little loopy thing. Just the, the other guitar. This is my dad dad change guitar. Positive stream diatoms, what did you, what did you do? What was the closer of today? Ah, no worries, thanks for the, thanks for the lurk, little chip. Chip. So cool.
thingy. Uh, yeah, with the little, like, metal things that you, like, clink, clink with. Like, they're super cool. 